I'm heading to the dentist. It started just lightly sprinkling and not even five minutes later, total downpour. So I'm taking shelter with a couple other people under uh, a business awning and hopefully it'll mellow out. I have 35 minutes to get here from on nude up to the Nana area and then get to the dentist. This isn't a great time of day though. It's uh, 2.30 p.m. so it could rain for the next hour, in which case I'm just gonna have to get wet. All right, I had to wait about 10 minutes for it to kind of go to a normal drizzle. It's actually starting to pick up again, but I made my way back up to the train. And hopefully by the time I get up to Nana, I have about 15, 20 minutes to play with to get to the dentist. So hopefully I can make a run in between storm cells because when it rains, it comes down hard, but usually for about 10 minutes at a time. Okay, so that worked out perfect. By the time I got off uh, at Plone Chit here, it's not even drizzling. And I should have known better. I could have made this dental appointment at any time, and I made it for 3 in the afternoon and during the rainy time. So that's not a good move. It was nice and sunny all morning. The second I stepped out of my condo, it started drizzling. Uh, by the time I got halfway to the BTS, it started pouring. But... I've learned to at least give myself an hour for a 25 minute trip during the rainy season because I know I'm going to have to duck for cover for 10 minutes, maybe twice on that trip if, unless uh, you want to get soaked. So here's my dentist, the Bangkok International Dental Hospital. It's on Soy 2 in Nana, Na, but the Plonchet BTS is actually closer than Nana. Na. So I just made the walk over here. It's just my six month cleaning, no big deal. It's a very nice operation. Um, they don't pre-book my dental insurance. I have Blue Cross, so I pay cash and then I have to submit the bill for reimbursement. You'll want to ask for a medical certificate, not just the receipt. It's an actual, just a small document that the dentist will write exactly what they did and exactly what the procedure and the charge was so you can get reimbursed at whatever rate your dental insurance is going to reimburse. There are a few places around Bangkok that do direct billing with my Blue Cross, but I found nothing but positive reviews on this. Again, it's the Bangkok International Dental Hospital. I did a separate video on it. It's in the in the Nana area, but it's right where Nana starts, up Soy 2, so actually closer to Plone Chet. I can highly recommend it. I've had uh, uh, a filling replaced and a couple of cleanings everybody super friendly uh, English is spoken it's a, a real expat hub so when you check in downstairs they'll take your blood pressure and then tell you what floor to head to I'm usually up on the fourth which I think is just general dentistry each floor is gonna have a, a little billing window here so the second you're done with your appointment and the dentist wrote down exactly what they did you'll come over and pay. In my case, I pay with my visa and then submit the bills to Blue Cross. I usually wait till I have two because they're not much. This cleaning will probably be at the higher end for a Bangkok dentist, maybe maybe $40, we'll find out. I'm sure you could have it done for 20. It's just, I, I stick with the same place just in case I need something serious, a crown replaced, something like that. I'm uh, just working with the same team. I'm not going to ask the film back in the uh, actual dental chair, but trust me, it's all state-of-the-art. There's uh, digital x-ray equipment that's better than uh, my old dentist in uh, San Diego. He jamming those things, uh, those little trays, into the roof of my mouth. So I like the uh, digital x-rays here much better. Bumrengrad Hospital, I I've, I've did a video on that. Is that one of the best medical hospitals here in Bangkok? And... and the answer is it has to be in the uh, discussion is one of the best. It also has a dental center. But to be honest, I called them to make an appointment, and I called here, and they answered here immediately. And I maybe a day later they called me from Bumrengrad, but I was already a patient here. And I'm just in the waiting room waiting for my dentist, and uh, here's my little backpack. I've said it in other videos, and I'll say it in this one. Bring over 
a brand new backpack because you're going to haul that thing around every day and they're expensive over here for you can get a fake kind of chinese knockoff that zipper might last 20 times it might last 100 but it, it's going to break at some point so i've been using this backpack almost every day for over a year and um I kind of wish I would have brought another one for a, a, an Adidas or a Nike or not that it has to be a name brand, but any kind of quality backpack. Don't be surprised if it's uh, 60 bucks in the mall over here. The same thing I bought at uh, probably Ross for $14, maybe Costco. Another thing is I didn't follow my own advice. It's the rainy season. I have flip-flops, but they're kind of good ones that take a while to dry out like the thicker kind um get a cheap pair and and you can get them over here shower shoes just the little cheapies when it's really pouring sometimes you have to walk through it's kind of gross but you'll have to walk through a foot of water to get up to the bts or you can stand there and wait for an hour for it to drain away so many people will just carry those bath kind of flip-flops in their backpack and uh swap them out because you can get soaked over here and you'll dry out immediately, but your shoes are still going to stay wet for hours. I did a pretty good job today. My feet are relatively dry. They're actually very dry and I'm dry as a bone, so no complaints. The other thing is I did bring, I used to be a mailman, so we have, I've gone through every different kind of shoe covering, although I was a mailman in San Diego, not much rain. I finally found kind of a breathable, I think they're actually for hunters. They pull over your shoes, they're breathable, they're way better than those rubber type galoshes. Those just make your feet sweat and after wearing them for anything more than like an hour, you're just miserable. But these mesh breathing types, you can probably find them in hunting catalogs and different places like that. I brought some and I just never bothered to carry them around. but. Those, you can step in a two-foot puddle, and yeah, you're going to be dry. All right, that was a relatively easy appointment. Just a cleaning, no problems. It is a little pricier than just an average, average small dentist on you'll find on every street here in Bangkok. So the more expensive, I'll call it expat dental center, was 1,850 baht, which is 54 US dollars. Now in my case, I submit the medical report and receipt for reimbursement. You just take a picture of it and email it to them. And I think they give me, I don't even know, I think the whole $53 back. I'm not positive. But even if you don't have dental insurance, to go to, and I'll call this one of the top of the line dental centers in Bangkok, not that bad. $54 cash out of your pocket. I'm sure you can have that done for $35, maybe even less. But like I say, I'm uh, kind of committed to this center. I love my dentist. She speaks perfect English. I see her around town. We kind of live in the same area. She's really good people. So I don't mind paying the extra 20 bucks for a cleaning. Feel comfortable in coming here if I have a more major problem. I might not feel as comfortable with somebody on, on just one of the clinics out on the street. I'm sure they do fine work, but this is where I go. And it seems like the storm has passed. I'm on Soy 2 here in Nana. Here's the uh, dental hospital. And at the end there is Sucumbit and the BTS. But I'll take a walk. It dead ends if I remember. I think I did a video a year ago on this Soy 2. But down where that big church is, I'll take a walk down there. I think it's a Calvary church, but we'll find out. Compared to the craziness, uh, just a block away on Soy 4 and the Nana Plaza red light area, this is actually a very quiet street. You're closer to the Plone Chip BTS than you are Nana. But that's okay. I got off at Plone Chip to come here. Nana kind of dumps you up by eh, Soy 8 where Plone Chit is two short blocks away from Soy 2 here. And some nice low-rise buildings. Well, that's a bit of a higher building, but mostly they're six-story buildings. And if memory serves, there's uh, some hotels on this street. I think that's Solo. 
is a hotel. Maybe not a bad option if you want to hang out in Nana Plaza without staying right in the middle of the Vegas Strip. Not sure what this is, restaurant and cafe. Oh, it says Egyptian and Indian. This uh, Nana area is a very high Middle Eastern tourist area, especially on the other side, like Soy 3, Soy 5. I've did videos on that area. It's uh, delicious Middle Eastern food. Or here's the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witness. I didn't know that was back there. I was heading to that hall. Uh, I was heading to that church at the end, but it says Jehovah Witness is tucked away back here on Soy 2. And this is the I check in residence. And we're coming up on the Lojas residence. I actually stayed here 2015, 2014, and I didn't even know that this is the parking entrance I guess I, I thought it was at the end of soy 4 but a lot of these places take up the whole block so obviously you can uh, drive your car or or come into the hotel here on 2 and then go through the hotel and pop out on soy 4 so use these hotels for instance I'm on 2 rather than walking all the way to Sucumbent and walking up and then coming halfway down 4 it's common sense just take a shortcut through the hotel nobody's gonna care and pop out on Soy 4 if that's where you need to be. And here it is, the Calvary Inter International Baptist Church. There's a guard here. I don't want to raise any suspicions filming and all. Usually these uh, um, churches will also have a small school, so I'm not sure if that's what that is. Oftentimes they'll have a, a little international school. And here's a Plymouth. I don't know what that is. Station wagon, it's kind of cool. Looks like it hasn't moved in 20 years. Here's the Atlanta Hotel, and I'll let their sign speak for itself. Now we're just gonna head back up towards Sucumbent. And I'm not sure what they're constructing here, but as you can see here in, in Thailand, it's not like in California with uh, Wood construction, I'm not sure why we, or the U.S. for that matter, I'm not sure why we do it in California either, I mean, with termites. But over here, everything is uh, definitely put together with metal. And we're back up to my dental hospital, Bamrangrad, the hospital and dental center, I, I'm 99% sure it's on the grounds of the hospital, will be on the other side of Sucumbit, we're on Soy 2, it is between Soy 1 and 3. That is my hospital. Great hospital. I'm sure it's a top-of-the-line dental center as well. Off in the distance, you can see some of the high-rises that are towards the end of Soy 4. You can stay in a quieter part of Soy 4. You're just going to have to walk through a pretty chaotic area every time you're coming and going from your place. That wouldn't bother me at all, but it's not my, my first choice where other people, it, it really might bother them to kind of walk by, not walk by, walk, walk right through the middle of, I'll call it four blocks of a pretty intense red light area. So keep that in mind when you're picking your condos over here in the Nana area. You might want to avoid staying on Soy 4 if you're uh, not into seeing the action day and night. Here's the green Villa exclusive residence. And that's the Sure Stay Plus Hotel by Best Western. Looks like an affordable option. And on the corner is the, I know it's a Marriott, I think it's the JW Marriott on Sucumbit, I think. I'll, I'll get the exact name. There's, there's the Marriott Marquis, which is on Soy 26 up in Prom Pong, and there's a Marriott at the end of Soy 24. I'm not sure what this one, I think it's the JW Marriott. The Focus, Plonchit. I'm not sure why it's right on the border of Plonchit and Nana, but I'm pretty sure this is still Nana. Looks like a nice, smaller unit. 
and we did just get I don't know what that was two inches of rain <laughs> in an hour it just poured so not to be gross or anything this is kind of stamped out but nine out of ten places will instead of sidewalk it'll be tile so just be a little careful when you see something that might be loose if you squish down on that tile it'll just throw up all kinds of funky water all over your shoes and up your pants Here's the Double Tree by Hilton. It's a Hilton property, Bangkok Plonchette. And I was correct, it's the JW Marriott. So right on Sukhumvit, it's Soy 2 in the Nanai area. This is going to be one of the fancier, nicer, and more expensive hotels if you want to hang out in the Nanai area. Here's the lobby of the uh, JW. Those gentlemen over there playing piano. It's very nice. I know they have uh, a seafood buffet here. I think it's 60 or $70, but don't, don't hold me to the price. I know it's not And I just looked it up to stay here tonight on a Wednesday. The lowest priced room is about 190 US dollars. So there's certainly some cheaper options around town that are still gonna be beautiful hotels. One of my favorites is the lower end Hyatt Place over on Soy 24. I've stayed there I don't know how many times for less than 60 bucks and that includes a, a beautiful breakfast spread that goes almost to lunch. I think it goes to 11.30. So I usually head in there at like 11. Plus, a lot of properties, I, I don't know, this is probably a, a little bit higher category property. That Hyatt Place, they have a Hyatt Regency and a Hyatt Grand in town. And I, I've stayed at both of those properties over the years. The Hyatt Place, it's not, I mean, the other two are definitely fancier, but there is nothing wrong with the Hyatt Place. And it's a category one. That's the lowest in the hotel chain for Hyatt. So you can get an incredible deal on points. I, I think like 5,000 5, Hyatt points will get you a night, sometimes lower during off season. That's incredible where the Grand Hyatt might be, and I'm making it up, I don't, I don't remember, 40,000 points a night. Coming up to Sukhumvit and uh, the end of Soy 2 here. Across the way, there's a Starbucks. I believe this is called the Plonchet Center. And if I'm not mistaken, right up there is a food court for just the office workers. I think it's only open, I'm gonna guess, like 10 in the morning until one in the afternoon. But I've had more than a few meals in there over the years. Again, very reasonable. I, I'm all about these food courts. I'm a, I'm a street food guy, but when I, when I see them kind of washing the dishes in a bucket out on the street, those kinds of things, I always take a, a second thought and oftentimes just walk by and head into one of these office food courts or one of the food courts in the mall. It's basically the same street food experience, oftentimes for the same price, but maybe, maybe it's 10 or 20 baht more. Yeah, I was correct. It's the Plonchet Center, and I didn't know they had a Via Market in there. So if you stayed anywhere in this area, Soy 2, Soy 4, Via Market is one of my favorite, and I'll almost bet that one stays up. I'm going to go look stays open 24 hours the via market up in where i'm at closes at 10 but down in uh Asolk, nana even the via in prom pong it stays open 24 hours a day which is much more convenient if you're a night owl nah she told me it does close at 10 p.m i know there's a food land and i'm pretty sure that's 24 hours i want to say it's on soy five i've been in there a dozen times it's on the other side of nana and this is a, a Beirut Lebanese restaurant. I think this is the chain. There's several of these around town that I think uh, I've heard on the Bangkok podcast. Uh, Greg and Ed, that's a great podcast if you're interested in learning more about Bangkok. He'll often talk about Beirut. So I'm wondering if that's the place. Uh, I still need to try it. I love, I love Lebanese, all kinds of Middle Eastern food. I'm back up to the BTS Plone Chit, and thank you so much for checking out my little video. Consider subscribing if you like these looks around Bangkok. Here comes my train. 
this is actually a real nice area right on the sides of Clone Chet. The other side's pretty expensive. It's near all the embassies. But back over here, real quiet neighborhood. I did a video on that uh, Clone Chet area near the BTS. Check it out if uh, you're looking for a quiet neighborhood. There's, there's no bars. You definitely have to get on the train and go up a stop or two to kind of be in the middle of the action. But if you're looking for quiet, it's a nice option.